This tutorial explains how to calculate the cumulative mean in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the vector object that we can create with line 2 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing which is called X. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 3 of the code. And after running this line of code you can see at the bottom that our data object X contains 6 values ranging from 1 to 9. So let's assume that we want to calculate the cumulative mean of this vector. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line 5. So in this line of code I'm using the cumsum function and I'm using the sigalong function. And I'm dividing the result of the cumsum function by the result of the sigalong function. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data object which is called xcm1. So if you run line 5 of the code, you can see that this data object is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 6 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new vector object, which contains the cumulative mean of our input vector x. So in this first example, I have shown you how to use the functions cumsum and seek along of the basic installation of the R programming language. However, the dplyr package provides an even easier alternative to this and this is what I want to show you in the next example starting in line 8 of the code. So in lines 8 and 9 of the code I am first installing and loading the dplyr package. I have installed this package already so for that reason I am just going to load it with line 9 of the code. So after running this line of code we are able to use the functions of the dplyr package. And one of these functions is the cum mean function, as you can see in line 11 of the code. And within the cum mean function, we only need to specify the name of our input vector. So in this case, our input vector is called x. And then we can store the output of this function in a new data object, which we call xcm2. So if you run line 11 of the code, you can see at the top right that another data object is appearing, which is called xcm2. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 12 of the code. And then you can see that the cum mean function has created exactly the same output as our previous example where we have used the cumsum function and the seek along function. So in this second example I have shown you an easier alternative to base R based on the deep layer package. And we can also use the cum-mean function to create a data set in which we are storing the output of the cum-mean function as a new column. And we can do that as you can see in line 14 of the code. So in this line of code I'm using the data frame function. And within this function I'm specifying the name of our input vector as first column. And then I'm specifying that I want to create another column which is called cm. And this column should be equal to the cumulative mean of our vector object x. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data frame object which is called data. So if you run line 14 of the code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object called data is appearing. And we can click on this data frame object to open a new window which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see the first column of our data frame is called x and contains the input vector x and the second column is called cm and contains the cumulative mean corresponding to the input values of the vector x. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I am explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions let me know in the comments section below. I will try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.